Alrighty, we are live in the living color. Welcome to another fantastic episode of This Week in Reselling, where we interview special guests each and every week from different walks of life in the reselling world. Here, we'll discuss the highs and lows in reselling and dive into great conversation. We are positive that you're going to learn something that's going to help you become a better reseller. I am your host, Ray, and I am joined with with my co-host, Dustin. Dustin, what is, how are you today, sir? It's been a good day. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. All right. Yep. So to, today we have our guest for the show, none other than the Junk Monkey, a.k.a. Rob. Now, a lot of people don't even know your first name, uh, Rob. <laughs> they, just know, yeah. they just know you as the Junk Monkey, the, lo- the, the monkey logo, yeah, if you will. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle? Yeah. Kyle. Uh, Where did that come from? Billy Flipper, Paul. Oh, Paul. Oh. Was, um, was uh, watching one of his live shows one night. Somebody put him on the spot because he said he was great with the uh, names and he got the guy's name. So I'm like, what's my name? He couldn't remember my name. Oh, they just it's hard. Kyle. And now even like a year and a half later, everybody still thinks my name is Kyle. Well, so, we're here to set the record Paul straight. Steve. So it's all right. <laughs> right. My first piece of merch, the first t-shirt i have made up is gonna say still not kyle still not kyle i like it i like like it i like it so um rob for the people that may not know you can you give us a little brief introduction of who rob the junk monkey is i know that we were talking a little bit before part-time but really full-time reseller you got a full-time job these days but i still have my regular job as a watchmaker which uh Antique, vintage, and luxury watches have been my niche on eBay for 25 years. And I, so I would always, I would accumulate old watches and I'd fix them up, sell them for a little extra money on the side. But when the shutdown started happening, what, three years ago now? Uh-huh. I, well, uh, we closed our shop to the public. We were still working, but we cut our hours way back. Three years later, we have still not restarted our regular working hours although we have reopened to the public so i get four days a week about four hours at a time to uh, try to make a living off of watchmaking and it's just not happening i make more money reselling wow but you you i know that you sell other things but i'm sure your expertise as a 37 year watchmaker like what's the percentage of watch related items to your non watch related items well, that you have listed on eBay. I'm still a, an active watchmaker. So mm. when it comes to parts, I have hundreds of thousands of new old stock and vintage and antique parts and tools. Uh, watches. I, I, I used to do, I don't know, maybe a dozen a, a month. And then I would save like the best dozen for this time of year. Uh, oh, between Thanksgiving okay. and Christmas, I would put 12 of the best watches I was able to accumulate through the year. Uh, nowadays, I have somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 listings and less than 5% of them are watches. Less than 5% of them are watches. Less than 5% are watch related. Wow. However, okay. It's still my biggest money maker over the course of a year. Is the watch stuff. Right. Wow. So, so you can sell a single watch for up to ten to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. And then you sell five or six of those in a year. Wow. Yeah. It's funny Not how that works. It's like price over the year. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like five percent of your inventory makes up the ninety-five percent of your income. Well, maybe seventy-five. Or seventy-five. Okay. But Gosh, maybe. that's crazy. So, um. 37 years watchmaker how does how does that happen well not quite 37 Uh, okay i started out working on fishing reels when i was probably eight or nine years old Mm -hmm. and right before i joined the navy in the late 80s my grandfather gifted me my great-grandfather's pocket watch it was not working so i'm stationed in Mm -hmm. san diego i'm going all over biggest city i've ever been to at the time and every navy yeah i was in the navy for uh, 11 years as and 
the whole time I was there, all over San Diego, none of the jewelers could fix it. They all wanted to box it up and ship it off somewhere. Then it occurred to me one day that, you know, the United States government trusts me to work on multi-billion dollar nuclear submarines. I should be able to tinker on a hundred year old watch. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you're That's right. I got my start. So I started going to uh, yard sales, flea markets, swap meets, as they call them in California, and just picking up junk watches and tinkering on them. And one day I've actually repaired one and I've been at it ever since. And 26 years ago, I got lucky and landed a five year apprenticeship under a master Rolex watchmaker. Wow. So I spent five years starving and living in a little one bedroom apartment, learning my trade. I had been at it. I'd already been repairing watches for 10 years at the time. And I thought I was good. Yeah. I just, oh, he taught in the first year, he taught me how much I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so you did that for five years. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be an apprentice for five years before you can go to Rolex and uh, challenge the bench. They call it. Huh. What is that? Well, you go, to, I went to Dallas and what they do is they, they set you at a bench and they hand you uh, one watch after another. Most Rolex watches, men's and women's, men's will have one caliber of movement and the women's will have another caliber of movement. And then there's the chronographs. So there's only basic three basic movements at the time. And you would have uh -huh. to uh, diagnose what's wrong with them, take them apart, clean them, service them, repair them, put them back together, regulate them, turn it in, and they would rate you on how you did. Wow. That's, that's insane. That's a crazy world. So five years apprenticeship, you challenged the bench. I'm guessing you passed the test. Oh yeah. And then from there you wanted, you started your own watchmaking business or how does that yeah. work? I had my own watchmaking business before that. I was actually at the time working for a authorized dealership and working in their repair shop, not only as a watchmaker, but also a full bench jeweler. I make jewelry, set diamonds, uh, cut gemstones. So anything to do with the watch and jewelry related industry on the upper echelons, I've, I'm, I do it. I am also a gem prospector and a miner. So I can do everything from going out and getting raw materials right out of the ground, bring them home and uh, take it all the way to a finished piece of jewelry with cut gemstones and everything. That's amazing. That's amazing. So where does eBay come into play here? Well, early on, I would, uh, when eBay first came out, there was also Yahoo auctions, a couple of other little small ones. I don't remember. And I had a business partner at the time who was, he was big into the tech world. He even had his own internet service provider business and he introduced me to eBay. I mean, this was early, early on, uh, late 97, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And so I started just selling you know, I was working on watches, collecting watches, and I'd get, I'd have buy up collections. And I'd have all these watches that I didn't know what to do with because nobody in Silsby, little tiny town in East Texas, funny fact, Silsby, Texas is where Mark Henry, the wrestler is from. My whole nice. Life. Strongest man in the world. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, there's only what, 1,500 people in the whole area. So there's not a whole lot of, you know, buying and selling of nice watches going on. So, I started selling on eBay and That's I've been awesome. at it ever since. And about three years ago, I went down a rabbit hole on mm -hmm. YouTube. I was trying to come up with ways to make my watches that I sell more marketable. And there, at the time there was a new style of leather watch band coming out. It was real thick leather, real simple, but heavy duty, rugged looking, and I'm like, I've worked with leather. I could make these. So I go down a rabbit hole watching these YouTube videos. And they kept trying to show me these shoe videos, shoe repair videos. And I was really bored one night. So I just watched one of them. And he starts talking about, yeah, you can sell these on eBay now. I'm like, ain't nobody buying no used shoes on eBay. <laughs> A little did I know. A lot of people. I have about 150 pair on eBay. Gosh, that's crazy. But, and then, you know, so I started watching what else can you sell on eBay? And then, you know, the algorithm starts pumping all these eBay reselling videos out to me. And I'm like, my God, I've been selling on eBay for 25 years and I didn't know any of this stuff. Mm. 
And I'm like, there's no way people are buying this stuff. So I'm like, let me go to the Goodwill and find some. I go to the Goodwill. I buy a cart full of the stuff that everybody says sells on eBay. I bring it home and take pictures of it. And lo and behold, people bought it. And then the pandemic hits. We can say that word now, right? Yeah, yeah. say it. Yeah. COVID yeah. pandemic. Yeah, well, was all another that crap hit the fan. Yeah. I'm like, I got to make some money. So I just started hitting the thrift stores and the bins and yard sales and anything I could to make a living. And next thing I know, I'm making more money selling used stuff than I am working on Rolex watches. That's so wild to me. Mm -hmm. I guess you, you, but like you were saying earlier, you know, you can sell a watch for like 10 grand, which makes up a lot of your, you know, but you got to find that right buyer. Oh yeah. Well, the watch collecting world is huge. I'm addicted to these. I follow a couple of TikTok accounts where all they do is do live Rolex watch, watch negotiating. It's it's fantastic. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't know anything about watches, so nope. I just think it's fascinating. Rolex is always a good name. As a reseller, when you're out picking, if you run up on a Rolex, there's about a 98.973% chance that it's not real. Really? Okay. Really. That's really high. That's extremely yeah, high. It's very high. There are There's probably more fake Rolexes in the world than there are genuine ones. Oh, I believe it. What's a good, um, what's a good tell? Uh, the weight, the weight. Okay. Mm. I can tell from across the room and I do it all the time and it, it aggravates people. So I have to, I've had to learn to bite my oh, tongue and yeah. wait until after they hand it to me. And as soon as mm-hmm. they hand it to me, I quickly glance, glance down at it, hand it right back and say, sorry, it's fake. So you can tell before they, you, they even hand you the watch. You're like yeah. fake. You can yeah. tell across the room just because you've been dissecting them and looking at them for so many years. Right. Wow. There's Rolex, anything of quality has a look, a feel, and a heft to it. It makes that sense. cannot be faked. You hand somebody, you hand me a, a plated, a pot metal or base metal plated watch that's beat up, sharp edges from the erosion, chemical erosion from the cheap plating coming off the corners. And, and it, it feels tinny and fake and light and Mm -hmm. you know it's got all these little sharp jagged edges on it and you can see the plating wearing off the the corners and high spots and it's just rolex doesn't Mm. do that nothing of quality does that oh i can imagine where is rolex is it made in italy france switzerland Switzerland. oh that makes sense yeah it's actually owned by the people of switzerland wow okay so it's not like um private owned company it's like the no, government or no, the people publicly owned. it's owned by the, by the nation of it's not owned and operated by the government of, of they mm-hmm. are you know they have a, a, a board and chairman and executives and all that but the company in and of itself is owned by every citizen of switzerland wow i would love to take it have you ever taken a trip to switzerland and no, no? okay all right. Well, let's say hi to some people in the chat because I know we got talking. And I love, hey, Marie. I love hearing about this. I love hearing about this. We have Rachel's in the building. We hey, have Rachel. Marie. Marie is saying hello. What's we have uh, Ken SSK Ken? promos in the building. We have Coco and Chewy. Hey guys. Um, good to see you. And then guys, Marie just dropped Rob's channel, so hey, we do have that. his uh his link tree down in the description below. So if you guys want to check that out, follow him on Instagram. Follow him, follow him on YouTube, and you go live every Wednesday night. Um, Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you'll have to work that out for your time zone. Do you live in California currently, Rob? No, I'm in Oregon. You're in Oregon. Oh, wow. So California to Texas to Oregon? Did I get that right? Yeah, there's a, well, born and raised in Texas. My dad was in the Navy. I was in the Navy, so I've traveled the entire world. Been mm-hmm. traveling all over the place most of my life i've i've lived in italy east coast west coast uh points in between so okay nice all right and we have uh christopher nutter is in the building good to see you uh chris glad that you can make it on and we have alan good to see you alan uh hope that you alan hope that you're still going to the bins we need we miss seeing you there 
Um, and we have Scott Chiching King. He has a great question. If you guys have any questions for Rob, put them down in the comments. We would love to answer those to the best of our abilities. Uh, Scott is saying, question for Junk Monkey. Do you restore watches? In fact, I do restore watches. Right now, I have about a six-month backlog of work Oof, that I'm trying wow. to get through because come October the 1st, 2023, I am going to retire from working directly for the public. 20 October, a month or no, no, no. 11 next months. Year, Q4 yeah. of next year, I am, I'm going to retire from the uh, easily accessible by the uh, general public. I, I'm going to move my shop here to the house. In fact, I've already got a bench set up over here and uh -huh. I've got every tool I need right here at home to do it, but I want to conglomerate all my tools, all my parts, get it all organized. And then I'm going to retire from the shop. Wow. And I'll just work on my watches and the occasional high-end watch. So do you have any – what's the coaching tree looking like here, Rob? Do you have any apprentice – apprent, what do they call them? Uh, An apprentice. Padawans? I have Padawans? <laughs> I've had one. Okay. In all the years, I've had one actually move forward. Really? Every, every other – every apprentice I've had except one has quit me after two weeks. Tops. Is it – why is that, Rob? Is it because you're know, really it hard? To be, it's it's not hard. It, it takes attention to detail beyond what most people are have ever had to do, mm. and it's not all. It, it's it's a lot of crap work, to put it honestly, or what okay. they perceive to be crap work, like polishing. The first thing I try to teach an apprentice is, is how to polish. And quite honestly, it's the most important skill in watchmaking and jewelry making. If you repair somebody's watch and you hand it back to them and it's got a piss poor polish on it, that's the first thing they see. And if you can't, if you know, if you don't have the patience and the skill to polish something, which is the first thing that your customers it's are like the see. fundamentals. Yeah. It's a fundamental thing. And if you can't do that, they're going to think you don't have what it takes to work on what's inside the watch. Wow. So every one of them quit me except one. Wow. And that's, he's the only one to make it through the polish. In fact, he's gone on. I, I talked him into going to an actual school instead of trying to do it the hard way. Like I did. So he went to an actual school and this kid was already a medical profession making uh, like 80 to a hundred thousand dollars a year as a respiratory therapist. Wow. And so he, he quit that job. He went back uh, to Pennsylvania, got into a school there and went in two years worth of school, made it on the front of a horological times, which is a magazine for watchmakers on so the front cover. He's on the front cover. That's amazing. A story about him. That's awesome. So, what yeah, is the world? So, so what does that world look like right now, Rob? Is there is there a lack of? It's in turmoil. Skilled watchmakers, or there is a like, huge lack of skilled watchmakers, but there is no shortage of unskilled that, workers out there. Okay, There's a lot of people out there giving uh, watchmakers a bad name. There's Ooh. a lot of people out there. They got their degree from YouTube University. Mm. And there are very, very few YouTube watch repairmen out there who are putting out good information on how to repair watches. I know because I have to work after a bunch of them. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So how, how does that happen? Like, um, say I have a watch. I take it to someone that I think is a good watch repair guy. Right. I get it back. The polish is poor. And I'm like, right. I got to find a good one. I got to right. find you. I got to find junk monkey. Oh. How do I find junk monkey? Like, oh. is there a, 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 like a blog to where it's like, these are the certified well, Rolex. You know, I, when I was on Facebook, there were a lot of up and coming groups and I'm still sure there's still some out there, but it, yeah. Um, uh, there's a guy down in Houston that I could, I could point people towards me. Like I said, I'm, I'm in the last year of my public career. I will still continue to work on watches until I completely go blind, but there, there's not many skilled watchmakers out there. Uh, there's some good solid craftsmen, 
but the vast majority of people working on watches out there, even in high end jewelry stores, they don't know what they're doing. Hmm. Gosh, that's crazy. Such a dying art. Mm -hmm. it, it is. And it's a shame. There used to be watchmaking schools all over the place. Right now, I think there's maybe three left in the United States. There's uh, one in Lidditz, Pennsylvania. There's one up in Seattle, I think. And there's one down in Paris, Texas. Wow. I think there's one more, but I'm not sure where it's at. We're going to have to, we're going to have to open one, Rob. <laughs> yeah. I, I was actually invited to teach at the one in Paris, yeah, Texas. That would I, be. A... Yeah. I'm not a teacher. I'm an instructor. Oh, okay. So it's, it's big difference. Big difference. Yeah. 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 That's why you only had one, right? <laughs> no, Pretty much, yeah. no, that's actually exactly why. They just couldn't, they just couldn't, uh, um, I couldn't scare this it. kid off and I tried. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. That's good. And He's well, in it for the right reasons for sure. Yeah. So, uh, we have Drew's in the building, Drew Strickland. Good to see you. And we have Collins, Col Collinson on the move. Good to see you. Glad that you can stop by. And we have Rachel's in the building. I think I already said hi to Rachel. Said, hi to Rachel. Yeah. And, uh, let's see here. Question. For Rob, why did you shave that beard? Uh, Great question. The Great official question. story is as a birthday present for my wife. She was not a fan of the big beard. She doesn't like the beard. <laughs> no, she did not. Wow. My wife is... The actual uh, I'm, reason, shh, it's a secret. I was working in my shop and I had a propane heater and I burnt right up the center. So I, Wow. I look like something out of Tolkien with these two big forks of a beard. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to, a, I'm, I'm trying to get this, uh, no shave November. So if you guys right. see me like patchy, I'm trying to get the beard, at least the cheeks to grow in a little bit. You before, cannot uh, trim your way to a big beard. Let it that's grow. True. That's let true. Let it grow. Keep it clean. Keep it moisturized. Just let it grow. Okay. Nice. Neck nice. Tube. Those no, are good no, tips. No trimming the edges, no lining up. Just let it grow. Huh. Huh. Okay. I was getting right. patient with that and have to trim the neck. Yeah. Yeah. That's why most people can't grow a big beard. Just let it grow. That's this true, is a good tell you. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great question by Christopher here, uh, Rob. What's the most common watch you end up repairing? Oh, wow. Um, you know, that's kind of a loaded question because there are a lot of watch companies out there that all use the exact same movement, mm. which is the guts of the watch, the engine, so to speak. So Citizen and Seiko kind of run neck and neck because they make the majority of the world's watch movements. That makes sense. So it's like there's so much of them. It's like, right. you know, you're going to work on Ford and Chevys more than you're going to work on Bentleys and Rolls Royces, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, we have uh, Kristen and Rural Squirrel is in the building. Hey, Good to Kristen. see you, Kristen. Um, all right. So Rob, let's get into the first segment of the show. We're going to talk about watches a little later on. Okay. Uh, we're going to go with the overrated, underrated, uh, segment of the show. Oh, we're going to ask okay. you 10 different questions okay. and you're going to let us know, or 10, 10 different subjects. And you're going to let us know if they're overrated, underrated. All right. All right. Let's do it. All right. But before we do that, we do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of a show. Uh, the good people over at popping off toys.com. One of the best places to sell or one of the best places to purchase Funko Pops. So if you guys have, uh, if you guys want to purchase some Funko Pops, go over to poppingofftoys.com and use the code Nashville Flippers, and you're going to get 10% off. Um, I see you're wearing some Star Wars gear, Rob. So we have some new Mandalorian um, Funkos. So if you guys want to pick those up, and we have the new Avatar Funkos. I'm not a big fan of Avatar, but to I each like his own. The first movie. You like the first one? I'm not a big I, fan. You know, at the time, look how great the graphics were. That's true. That's true. That is true. So if you guys want to purchase some Funkos, go over to poppingofftoys.com and use the code Nashville Flippers. All right. So first one up, Rob. The new 24 pictures on an eBay listing. Overrated, overrated. underrated. Overrated. Over <laughs> Let us know why. Unless you have multiple items, you don't need 24 pictures. 
Right. I find it hard to even take more than four pictures of most items. Unless there's a lot of very specific little parts and pieces that you need to take pictures of or some flaws. But you mm. can still do all of that in 12 or less. Gotcha. Well, there you go, guys. Overrated. That's great. I love how Dustin and I were talking about this the other day. I love how eBay never gives us what we want. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, they push it's like, this, hey, not please get rid of the layaway pay. program. Make people pay. Exactly. Well, the best we can do is 12 more pictures. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's 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 ridiculous. Um, I saw uh, Kristen real quick. Uh, we do do a uh, reseller draft Mondays. We're not going to have one tomorrow. It's actually next week because Paul, the Philly flipper, the person that I do the reselling draft Mondays, the Eagles play Monday night football tomorrow. So we're going to take a break this Monday because he's a big Eagles fan. And uh, we're going to resume next Monday. I think it's the 21st. And we're going to pick our favorite thanksgiving foods mm, stuffing rob what's your favorite thanksgiving food besides you know the big the big ones stuffing but only if it's stuffing real homemade cornbread dressing oh mm -hmm. yeah my wife makes a good stuffing with the andouille sausage and the and the eggs and, and the celery all of it yeah everything making me hungry. what's the difference between dressing and stuffing is there a difference Stuffing can be anything i guess you, you stuff it in there it's stuffing okay <laughs> Are we making dressing this year, Dustin, or is that on your plate? No pun intended. No, I mean, okay. Bring it, bring the leftovers from a parents' house. Yeah, we're gonna figure. We're we were talking about that earlier today. Uh, I know about the variety. Turkey, oh yeah, the price. Have you seen the price of turkeys, Rob? No. Do I want to? What is it, D Dustin? That was totally fake, I think. But <laughs> but no, the price of turkeys is going up like tremendous, like per pound. Well. You know what? Bacon and beef is both up. Why wouldn't yeah. turkey go up? That's true. That's true. Eating ramen noodles for Thanksgiving this year. I real. This is totally off the beat. Like um, super. You know, we were talking about beef, and you know, I was listening to a podcast earlier, and there they had a someone on there that was. Um, he had a regenerative uh, farm. You know, he doesn't use any. Uh, you know pesticides or whatever right. and he had the rain he had a neighbor that also has a farm and he it was raining and so the runoff off of his farm goes yeah. into a creek yeah. and literally the difference between the runoff of his neighbors and his his creek water is yeah. like night and day it's like crystal yeah. clear to like muddy water right. so i don't know i love uh, i love a good beef though oh yeah mm -hmm. So, all right, let's get back on track. <laughs> Number two, uh, overrated, underrated, Dustin. Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. I'm going to have to say he's underrated. He's one of those people in Hollywood that can make a movie that you can absolutely turn the rest of the world off and just have fun watching this action adventure movie. There you go. I don't think he gets enough credit for that. I think we need more action stars nowadays. Well, I heard somebody in an interview recently say they can't make movies like that anymore. They can't make movies that are fun, just fun to watch anymore. That makes sense. It's, they spend it, too much money. They don't want to yeah, lose any money. It costs so much money to build one. And once upon a time, they would have the movie and it would be in theaters forever. I mean, Raiders of the Lost Ark, when it first came out in my town, stayed in the theater and was packed house every night for like a year and a half. Oh. And then how cool is you that? You would have to wait another year before the VHS would come out. And then you would have to wait another year for the uh well, made for TV version of it or the you know the edited for TV version would come out. Yeah. And they got royalty. Everybody involved with that movie got royalties every step along the way. Now it's in theaters for what six weeks tops. If that goes straight to streaming, and they don't even sell DVDs much anymore. I mean, or Blu rays, they everything goes straight to streaming. And a lot of the companies, and especially the actors, they don't get royalties from the streaming, huh? I guess it's like the music industry, yeah, you know, a lot of them they hate things like Napster, yeah, huh? I never thought about that. Yeah, you're right. If they're not getting Gosh. paid for it, I mean. What's your favorite uh, Sly Stallone movie? Oh, man. 
put me on the spot. You know, if you just go, like the one that comes into your head, you're like, man, I really love that movie. Rocky. Rocky, yeah. yeah Wrote and directed. Movie, and... Yeah. Yeah. Man, the story of how that movie even came to be could be a movie in and of itself. Mm hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Henry Winkler, the Fonz, we wouldn't have got Rocky. Tell us why. Henry I don't know the story. Winkler was the very first person to ever see Rocky, the Rocky script. Huh. Somehow or another, he knew Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone shows up with his wife's kid and a dog to Hollywood, doesn't have a place to sleep. They're living out of their car or something or some low rent hotel. And he gets in touch with Henry Winkler and gives the script to Henry. Henry takes it to some one of the the uh, the big producers. The, yeah, okay. well, no, the the big company, the uh, like MGM, they, is yeah, it? Like, yeah, I don't. I forget yeah. which one it was, NBC or Fox or whoever it was. And they bought the script, but he wanted Sylvester wanted to be in the movie, and he wanted creative Control. powers and all of yeah. that. And he wanted, you know, the royalties. And he wanted the whole shooting match. And this is his first script that he's ever wrote. So Henry goes in and sells it, comes back, and 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 uh, Sylvester's like, well, where's everything else I asked for? The Winkler's like, you, you, you really wanted all that? He sent the Fonz back to the studio and made him get his script back. That's crazy. And then it was, it, it took another year and a half for him to get somebody to help him produce his movie. That's but wild. during that time frame, the Fonz was helping him, keeping him alive, keeping him afloat, keeping him in work. And That's awesome. Man, he, owe, he owes a lot to him. Butchered version of it's what it should have been. Yeah. And the story still goes on. I mean, like Creed, the new Creed movies, you know, yeah. all that. Yeah. Still going. It's a great franchise. It's great one of franchise. those franchises that, you know, everybody knows the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everybody knows Star Wars, Star Trek. Nobody really talks much about Rocky. Mm. Nope. Hashtag Rocky, Rocky Rocks. Yeah. Right, Dustin? Rocky Rocks. <laughs> there you go. We have our girl Jennifer Hayes in the building. Hey, Good Jennifer. to see you, Jennifer. Glad that you can uh, stop by. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, moving on. Number three ebay's live auctions i think it's overrated overrated do you think it's actually going to be a live thing auction thing it, i think the entire live auction everything is overrated whatnot everything i i, I don't want to speak poorly of whatnot but I, I you know months ago before it as just as it was getting some traction i tried to get on it i had trouble i had technical difficulties there um customer service was not great finally got everything on there i was able to get on as a buyer mm -hmm. and i'm buying a few things here and there and and i had a buyer uh mess me over sent me a box uh -huh. full of junk that i didn't order and the stuff that i paid for was not in there and then mm -hmm. he ghosted me and couldn't get any help from whatnot and it's like eh. but the, the whole live auction thing Eventually, people are going to wake up and they're going to say, this is no different than watching, you know, one of the infomercial TV channels where they sell live <laughs> on there. And Oh, wow. Yeah. Like QVC. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be, it's just, it's QVC, but now everybody has access. Ah. To it. I've never thought about it that way, Rob. That's interesting perspective. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I know there's a lot of people out there doing really good with it. I'm in the same boat that you are, though. I don't. I don't understand. Like you said, after the shininess of this wears off, it's not right. gonna because they're pumping a lot of money into it. Oh yeah. And after after they stop, I don't know where it's gonna be. I think so. I was one of the first people to let to put the word out that eBay was doing the live auction thing now. Mm -hmm. They uh, a couple of months ago they sent me invitations to be there with their first one, and I, I somewhere in my Instagram feed you'll see where I I posted a picture of it within the last two or three months. I screenshot it and put it up. Yeah, this uh, Rachel saying that uh, QVC ain't closing down though, which is true. No, they're not. 
Yeah. And then um, someone's over here calling you old, which I completely disagree. You know, he may be a little older, but like you said earlier, if you can if you can work on nuclear submarines and take apart Rolex watches, I think he knows what, you know, I think he knows about how to get things going on. Yeah. He knows a little, something, yeah. a knows little some, some, but, um, but yeah, well, like, he, but he, he did say it is a little getting older and I do get it. It's, and you know, it was fun when I was on there buying, but it's, I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of work to be done with it. And I don't know that, you're going to garner a quality upper echelon of buyers in that market. Mm -hmm. going to be a lot of, it's still going to be, I think, I think it's going to be great for uh, collectibles. Uh, you know, maybe not like vintage Rolex chronographs, uh, but I think it's going to be great for Funko pops. I think it's going to be great for comics, VHS, mm -hmm. media, uh, pop culture items collectibles i think it's absolutely fantastic for that but see here here's the thing here's the issue that i have with it i'm not sitting down for an hour on my phone waiting for something to come right. up that i might want yep. you know True. if i want a star wars funko pop a particular one i'm going on ebay i'm going on yep. mercari i'm going on somewhere to buy it oh. like my time is way more valuable than me sitting on right. You know, and then, you know, that's my, that's me. That's how yeah. I think about it. You know, like maybe I can, by the time, the you know, I look is that you can get it cheaper, but the time, you know, I'm thing. like, yeah, I'd rather spend my time doing something else. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't find, like I said, I'm, I'm anti whatnot. I don't get it. I'm not, and anti. I'm not I'm just, it's just not, I'm my, anti. Not I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a no to whatnot. No to what's that? What's that, Rob? It ain't my cup of tea when I really want a shot of whiskey. I agree. I agree. There you go. All right. All right. Let's move on here. Um, number four. four. Oh, speaking of. Yep, we've touched touch on this. Overrated, underrated. Turkey stuffing or dressing. <laughs> all right, yeah, no, I forgot to put that on there. All the dressing all the way. Can't there talk about it enough. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. All right. Let's move on here. Um, number five. This is a good one. Casio watches. Uh, I think they're underrated as a uh, desirable watch, but they're very overrated as far as their quality goes. Okay. You see a lot of people buying Casio watches? There, there is actually a following for the vintage Casio LCD watches. Okay. And, and the more complicated they were, the better. Huh. However, not many of them survived because the quality was just terrible and still is to this day. They're, they're, they're creating the newer Casio stuff is uh, they're making something for the public demand as cheaply as they possibly can so they can get the highest return on their investment. When, if they would just bump the quality up 10%, they could do the same thing with the price on the other end and get the same return on their investment and have a better watch out there. Hmm. There you go. Okay. Scott has a good good point. Speaking, you know, talking back to the whatnot and live auctions. I'm not anti live sales. I just don't need to do them right now. So that makes sense. Yeah, I just feel like I can get more money listing it. I don't know. Yeah, it's fun. You know, there's some celebrity ish type yeah. people out there who have this huge social media following not only in the reselling community, but in the vintage clothing community or whatever their niche is. Mm -hmm. And they're doing awesome at it. They're mm -hmm. getting more for an item than what you or I could get for it on eBay. But if either of us put it on whatnot, we'd be lucky if we didn't lose money. Yeah, I heard that. Here's a good point by Sonny. Good to see you, Sonny. I'm anti no sales. <laughs> we all are for hey, sure. Sonny, how are you, brother? Yeah. So, all right. Is that, um, let's see. All right. Moving on. Um, number, number six, six, Dustin. 
Yellowstone the show. Say that again. Yellowstone the show. My wife watches it. I've caught a few episodes of it. Looks like a pretty good show. I think they went a little far over the top with it, but it's their show, not mine. That's true. Yeah. Do you? But you enjoy the the soap oh, opera. Really yeah, kind of. Yeah. Not the soap opera part of it, but uh, when when it's time for things to get just gritty and nasty, they, they mm-hmm. shoot for the moon on that show. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. Or <laughs> it's uh Kristen says she's watching Yellowstone right now. No spoilers. No spoilers. To, yep, today is the season premiere. Yeah, no spoilers. So all right, moving on. Uh number seven. This is a good one. Selling clothing on eBay, Rob. That, that's a hard one for me to uh, to answer. I've only recently started doing clothing other than, you know, finding something really great, like a Patagonia puffer jacket. Now mm-hmm. I'm in it just any kind of jeans that I can sell or I, I've started bringing in a lot more clothing and I haven't been doing it long enough and haven't made enough sales at it yet to, to make a decision. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's very fair analysis here. Uh, all, oh, <laughs> spoiler alert. Uh, she says they're all still hot. So, uh, which, here we go. Everyone in the comments, which one, which character do you think Kristen and Rule Squirrel likes the most? Is she a Kevin Costner man? The uh, Rip? What's the KC character? What are all the other ones, Dustin? Oh, God. Jamie. Jamie, the lawyer. So, there you go. Let us know. Who, more of a Rip guy. You're more of a Rip guy? Yeah. But who does Kristen like? I'm gonna go with the Rip guy. Maybe she likes I think that. She like, likes Rip too. Man. I think she likes Rip. I think she likes Rip. Rip. Rip is the um, Rip's the man for sure. Do you need me to answer? Well, yes, <laughs> we'll need you to answer after some answers come through here. Yes, we need you to answer for sure. She probably likes that old guy. That what's the old guy's name, Dustin? Oh God, I can't even think. That like that young girl. You remember that? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's move on. Um, number eight. Number eight. No. Did Is I it? skip? Yeah. Number, number eight. seven. I did seven. You did selling clothing. Good. Okay. Yeah. Number eight. Video games. Video games. <clears throat> yeah. Not I just selling played. video games. Video games in general. Does All Junk right. Monkey play video games? The last time Junk Monkey played a video game, it was. Pitfall on the original Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Oh wow! Okay, I've tried. I tried playing some of the newer uh, games, the ones with great graphics and all of that, and all these buttons. And uh, yeah, you want to see some? I've probably hold a world record for the number of video game controllers crushed. Oh, crushed some expensive things. Like, I told you yeah, to yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I have the patience of a saint to take apart a watch. That's worth twenty thousand dollars plus uh, together, but you hand me a. I like for machines to do what I tell them to do when I tell them to do it, and when they don't, it makes me very angry. There you go. Okay, so overrated, overrated for Junk Monkey. There <laughs> yeah, we for go. Me personally. All right, I, I, I've got a little brother who's my daughter is a gamer. Uh huh. My little brother, he plays those a lot of those big games and stuff, and. I enjoy watching them. It's almost like watching an animated a movie. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want, if you hand me a controller, something bad's going to happen. There you go. Speaking of Cowboys, one of my favorite video games and my wife loves this video game. Cause like you were saying, it's like a movie watching a movie is a uh, red dead redemption Two, like the cowboy video game. She loves it. She would, I would come home. She's like, are you going to play the mo- Are you going to play the game? Can I watch you play the game? She could not wait to watch me play the game i have to amend my previous statement the last time i played video games was actually link the legend of zelda the very first one the original one on the okay yeah 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 rolled it over once and made it about halfway through the second that's a hard game too Eh. yeah all right here we go Kristen. in order luke cole and costner which one's luke 
Oh, yeah, those are their actual names. I don't know their actual names. I guess, yeah, we don't know the names. Give us give us the uh give us the character names. Yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> I, let's see here. Jing King is saying I don't like to watch series just too much. But this is true. This is true. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Sunny says last game I played was Cat and Mouse. That's with Carla won and said no more games for me. Okay, okay. Uh Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, LOL. Um all right. Let's see here. Moving on. Number nine, flea markets, or like you were saying earlier, swap meets. Man, I love a good flea market. I got my start in the flipping world at a flea market in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And unfortunately, here in Oregon, we don't have any. Mm, that's weird. We have, one, we have one that comes around once or twice a month, and it's the same dealers with the same stuff every month. So I love a good, I love a good swap meet or a flea market. I just wish I had some around me. Mm. You need to come down South. We'll take yeah. you to some flea markets. Man, there I bet there were some good ones in Texas. On the Florida, Georgia, the Florida, Georgia line uh -huh. uh, on I-5. No, I-95 over there. Right there on the Florida side, there was a massive flea market. I used to go out there almost every weekend. Florida Georgia Line, not to be confused with, with Florida some, Georgia Line. Yeah. What's your favorite Florida Georgia Line song, Dustin? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to country. You listen to Florida Georgia Line, you know their songs. No. Well, he say, he's right. He doesn't listen to country. That's mm -hmm. What does he listen to, Rob? Well, if Florida Georgia Line, that's not country. Uh, that's true. That is true. Good point. Good point. Yeah, um, Casey Dutton, yeah. Rip Wheeler, and John uh, Dutton. Okay, okay. Uh, Casey, uh, his Casey wife is so annoying. The lawyer is, is the lawyer character. Casey, right? I, no, that's uh, Jamie. Casey's the Jamie. Uh, the other brother, the one that's married to the Native American girl. The one that kind of oh, looks like Jack. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. yeah. So, all right, moving on. Last one here, Rob. Number ten. Oh, soccer, World Cup, overrated, underrated. Are you a soccer Don't fan? Me. I am not. A, a, okay. A I, I got nothing against it, but I'm I'm not a soccer fan. Okay. Just too boring. Growing up, the only people who played soccer where I'm from mm -hmm. were girls. Okay. I, it, it's a it's a born and raised it, the way I came up. To me, that is a girls game and it it didn't become an everybody big sports thing in america until i was already a grown man and it was just gotcha. never something i connected with gotcha that's fair that's fair all right so that concludes our segment of the show overrated underrated thank you so much for answering those questions rob so um long-winded on some of those no i like it i like i like hearing your perspective on certain things dustin do we have a dustin tip of the week this week yeah i got maybe all right so next one up dustin's <laughs> tip of the week presented to you by uh stickerwise.com use the code flippers and you're gonna get 10 percent off dustin what is your tip of the week all right it's getting cold outside this is for those of you that have their office in the garage get your heaters and get your gloves that you can use your phone with oh. stay warm while you're posting Okay. They got That's, gloves it's, you can use while you post. Oh yeah, they got well, they got gloves that you can. It's touch screen. I really? guess compatible like for your phone. Yeah. Yep. I need to get me some of those. Yeah, yeah those are. There you go. Saver. Rob, you get, I'm, I'm, is your shop outside? Yeah. Do you have like a? He, yeah, this is a. Bit, there? I am sitting right now in a two and a half car garage that's detached from my house. Okay. I've got power out here, but that's it. Okay. Gets. I bet it gets cold up there. In Oregon. It's very cold. Here mm. in the valley itself, it, it doesn't get as bad as the surrounding mountains. Gotcha. Okay. Scott says he's got to go. Good to see you, Scott. Glad you can stop by. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this Sunday evening. So there you go, guys. Dustin's tip of the week present to you, presented to you by StickerWise.com, one of the best places to get stickers. And you can save 10% off by using the code FLIPPERS. All right. So 
This is going to be a good one, Rob. So next segment of the show, skip or flip. I'm going to show you three different pictures of items that recently sold on eBay. And you're going to let us know if you would purchase them. Skip or flip, right? All right, let's yep. do it. And all right. And I got 30 of these, and they all have been flips. Oh. So. You, all right. First one up. Maybe I'm going to switch it up here, Dustin. You never know. I don't know. All right. First the one up here. They're not in your favor. Here we go. We have here Scott. Oh. Oh. Get that thing in a freaking heartbeat. Those things are junk. And I know they sell, but I'm a watchmaker. I've had, I refuse to work on them. I know they're junk. That okay. right there is a big feedback them. waiting to happen. So, for the people listening to at home, I, we have a brand new Invicta watch. Um, you can see the price tag on here. It says nine hundred and ninety-five dollars, Rob. What do you yeah. think about that? You think it's sold for that much? I think they charged about nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars too much, and huh. it didn't sell for that much. They always go on sale more often than not, fifty to sixty percent off. So let so it's this is an Evicta Pro Diver. Mm -hmm. So if you go diving with that watch, you're going to die. <laughs> why? <laughs> Tell us why. Because it is a low quality piece of junk. Why? <laughs> Tell us what we call in the industry a fashion watch. It is fashion. made to look like what is popular, not work like what is real and popular. Mm. Okay. Could you expand on that comment for like what works and is popular? Like what do you mean by that okay. statement? The crown. Okay. Um, this is what's known in the industry as a tool watch or in the collectible watch collectible world as a tool watch which like means only to only people that are tools wear the watch no as the watch itself is an actual tool it okay. has a function beyond telling time it's supposed to be able to tell time in very adverse environments diving watches you're 300 feet down the big knob on the side by the number 15 that's called the crown okay it is attached to a thin little piece of very brittle steel that is about 0.6 millimeters you touch that crown wrong it snaps your watch floods with water you have no way to judge your ascent to do your stops to keep you from getting the bends you flood you wear that watch under the water you can very easily become uh get the bends so to speak or not so to speak actually that watch will kill you if you take it under the water wow okay and so, it is a cheap piece. Of, it's not made with quality parts and pieces. Its sole function is to look like a tool, not to actually be a tool. Mm, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So why do you do you think this actually sold? Why is there a retail sticker for $995? Because they're very popular in this particular one. Instead of having a Chinese quartz movement in it, it's probably got a Swiss quartz movement in it. And that quartz okay. movement probably cost twelve dollars and ninety five cents. <laughs> so, Rob, what are you doing here? Are you skipping? Are you flipping? Oh, I skip what this thing in a heartbeat? I would not sell one of these because they. I know how poorly made they are. If you sell an Invicta watch on eBay, you have a very high chance of getting a negative feedback. Okay. Interesting. So, so what do you think this sold for on eBay? Rob. On eBay, I would say it sold somewhere in the two hundred to two hundred and thirty dollar range. Okay. So you think it actually sold for that much money, but you would not even touch it. I, I think it would because the person who bought it didn't know any better. But anybody who actually knows watches, you couldn't pay them to take that watch. Mm, so the people buying are more attached to the fashion part of it than the actual horological part of it. Okay. Okay, gotcha. All right, let's go ahead. Surprise Ryan. me! Show me what some sucker paid for it. <laughs> Ryan just jumped in the building. Good to see you, Ryan. Glad you could stop by. So, okay, so what are you doing, Dustin? You flipping or you skipping? If I got it for a dollar twenty-five, come on, let's be realistic here. Okay, I found it at the Gimme Five. Five bucks, yeah, but no. Okay, let's say you found this at Ross in the case. Ross, dress for less, nineteen ninety nine. Okay, let's go with that. 
All right. I'll, probably, I'll, I'll take a right? chance on it. I look up the comps. Then I put in the disclaimer at the bottom, do not wear swimming. Do you, right? Do <laughs> so not go I'm down. Covered. So I'm covered. <laughs> That's fine. All right. So all right. So this watch. Uh, uh, just so, new, by the way, see the links sitting in the box. Somebody's uh-huh. had it partially disassembled. Yeah, oh. been s- so no, those aren't just like extra links. Nope, they don't send them extra links loose like that. Oh. That watch okay. is not new. So okay, it's, it's just complete That's... in box. All the parts and pieces are in the box. They're not That's together like they're supposed to be, but they're all there. So it's kind of like the Spanish version of Turbo Man. Turbo, yeah. The, yeah. All right. That's so an this Ikea watch. Some assembly required. Oh. Ikea. All right. So this watch just sold on eBay for $47. Yeah. So there you go. Someone knew what they were purchasing. Mm-hmm. You know, for I, $47. I have customers bring me those things all the time. I just take, hand them back to them, tell them I can't work on them. Oh, Wow. Because they're just they're better off just buying another yeah. crappy watch, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a QVC right. style watch. They sell those things by the metric ton on the shopping networks. <laughs> Coming We're, soon to you on whatnot. They oh nice. There you go. All right, here we got another watch. Let me know. Skip or flip, Rob. I would flip that watch. That okay. is a Timex Iron Man Digital diver 200 meters that is actually a very sought no. after watch and timex is very near and dear to my heart as a watchmaker and there's a great story if it wasn't for mickey mouse that watch would not exist so is casio and timex the same thing because this one says casio on it scroll back to another picture that's a g-shock yeah okay Oh, it says Frogman. I thought it said Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. The, okay, oh, I see that right. okay, yeah. okay. It's a G-Shock. I'm still flipping that. Uh, yeah, G-Shocks are eminently popular amongst the even the higher upper echelon of watch collectors. Really? If I can get that watch for less than fifty dollars. I'm going to flip it all day, every day. And it's one of the Casio brands. One of the Casio lines. That actually has a decent amount of quality behind it. So, yeah, I'd flip that watch. What are you paying for it, Rob? Anything under 50. 50? And what do you think it's selling for? I honestly, it, it's not the kind of watch that I would buy for myself. Uh-huh. So, I'm thinking that watch is over $100. I think it's over 100 and a half, maybe as much as 200 Okay. Okay. No, it does say thirty fifth anniversary on the band and on the back of it. So you know what that kind of that kind of information means to a watchmaker? Nothing. 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 Okay. It's 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 a sales point. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right, Dustin, what are you doing? I'm definitely flipping it. G shock. You flipping it? Mostly money. Okay. Um, Ryan is saying flip, and Maria is saying flip, and Drew is saying it's tempo turbo. It's turbo time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this watch just sold on eBay for $489. Yeah, that does not surprise me. So there you go, there guys. There are a lot of very high end watch collectors in this world. And when asked what they wear daily, they eight wear out this. Of 10 of them will tell you a G Shock. Interesting. Okay. They own literally million dollar watches and they would rather wear a G Shock. Huh. Okay, that's good to know. That is good to know. All right, last one here, Rob. This one's a little tricky, okay. so I can't show you the last picture. And I might not have enough information just leading on the picture for this. But maybe you would know. Okay. Well, we'll see. Is it a turkey? Those are supposedly links for a uh, Rolex day date presidential style bracelet however if you is there any way you could blow that picture up so i can see the pin closer the pin yeah can you make that picture big enough can you enlarge it big enough to where i can see that pin this pin right here yeah okay can you magnify that i think i can do it i 
I think I have to. I think I I think I've seen enough. Okay. If they're selling that as a Rolex Presidential Lynx, uh, they're not. You don't think this is? Um... Those are not genuine Rolex Lynx. But that's how can you style, tell the style? Because that style is known as the Presidential Lynx. It came out in the '60s, and it was given the name presidential and it's the bracelet not the watch the watch the bracelet is called the presidential because they gave um i believe it was kennedy got one of the first ones yeah that is not rolex huh. rolex doesn't use that plastic tube and this right here the, yeah the threads on the screw are not directly under the head they're all the way at the other end Oh, so that okay. is not a genuine Rolex. Now, if that is an Audemars Piguet set of links, those might be real and 18 karat gold, and they may be worth some money. But if they're trying to say that this is, and now that I'm looking at it, it looks, we're looking at this from the, it looks like the backside, but if that's the top and it's flat like that, it's not uh, Rolex, it's possibly Audemars Piguet. Hmm. And if that's the case and they're real, they're probably worth somewhere between two hundred and fifty and three hundred and fifty dollars, if that's what it is. So, if this was a real Rolex link to a presidential date, day date, day date, mm -hmm. it would be a three hundred dollar. No, if it was Rolex, it'd be uh, probably somewhere between four hundred and fifty and five hundred to six hundred dollars, somewhere in there. Just for these two but, little links. Yeah, because the Rolex version of that style is a uh, solid 18 karat gold two links okay. on a modern bracelet would could easily be quarter of an ounce of gold but that's not uh, that's not rolex uh, that's if that is a high-end watch that's probably Audemars Piguet. and this screen is way too I'm, tiny for me to see that yeah let me look at, i'm going to show you the last picture on here you just probably saw the uh it did sell for five fifty. Oh well, see so, this picture that you're showing here. That's different than the picture we were just looking at. Before. Yeah, that was the backside of a. Okay, it was the backside. Okay, uh, that is not genuine Rolex. And if it sold, it's the same. Over 500, it's the same picture. Okay. And then they showed this. Yeah. At day the day end. Thirty six. Yeah. Okay, this is the brand. One of the brand new. That's one of the newer ones. Uh huh. And I have not yet had a chance to work on one of those, the 36 millimeter day date presidents. So, and, it, the, and when I say president, Rolex calls that bracelet the president. They call the watch the day date. Okay. They may have a new updated version of the band. Are they num? Are they? It says day date 36. Like, are there different models? No, 36 uh, is talking about the millimeters of the watch case it's a 36 okay. millimeter case okay so that one would be one of the smaller ones they have she'll also have the 40 millimeter and the 42 millimeter i think but that does not that's not the traditional way that they've made the screws and links for the rolex day date presidential bracelet for the last 60 years okay now okay so let's say I'm going to a garage sale and I see this. How do I know it's, if it's Rolex? You don't unless you bring it to somebody like me. Okay. So, okay. You, but this is, you know, like you were saying, it's gold, you know, the weight of gold, yeah. whatever, how long. So you could take it to a, a pawn shop or a jeweler and then they could tell take you it to what a pawn the, shop or a jeweler. They're going to weigh it. They're going to test it to see if it's real gold. And then they're going to give you about 80% of the scrap price of the gold. Okay. Which on this is about a quarter of an ounce would probably be somewhere in the five to $600 range just in scrap gold. Hmm. Okay. Wow. So I'm still, you know, like I was saying earlier, you would have to take it to someone that yeah. knows watches to tell you if this is, you know, a, a legit Rolex, but, I don't know. I feel like if you, if I were to take it somewhere and they're like, oh, I can offer you, I don't know. I like, what's a good way to not get screwed over? You know what I mean? Don't, don't pay anything for stuff like that. Okay. The Just only time you come on out ahead on when people have the watch stuff, if you're not, 
it, it's very easy to get screwed over in the watch world. There's way more fakes of high-end watches out there than there are high-end watches in existence. And <laughs> at a garage sale, they can tell you anything they want. Yeah, yeah, it's real. Yeah. This is they're, they're over here uh, roasting these pictures. These are yeah, those, I don't. This is a terrible. This is a terrible. It picture. is terrible. I can't see the. I, I know this. I knew the style as soon as I saw it, and just looking at that pin, the screw, it looked more like a cotter pin to me than a screw. You were finally able to get me one picture where it showed the threads right up against the head of the screw, which I've never seen that in Rolex. However, there are some brand new models out right now that I have not yet had the pleasure of messing with. And there, believe it or not, when it comes to Rolex, there's just as many fake boxes out there as there are fake watches. Oh, I believe it. They fake I the boxes, it. the warranty card, the hang tags, everything. What um do they come out with new watches every year? You know, like the yeah. 19, 9, 1922 oh. present. Okay. In fact, it's kind of rare. Rolex has come out with more new models or revamps of the existing models in the last 10 years than they have in the last 50 years. Oh wow! Okay, just because people are collecting watch when what you have is already perfect. Oh, uh, see what I mean? Yeah. These days, the only reason they're changing is because there's so many other companies out there who are selling exceedingly high-end watches for exceedingly stupid amounts of money that uh, stay in the upper level, uh, stay on top of the pyramid. And they had to do something. This guy has only sold two things in the past 90 days. Yeah, See, that's a red flag for me. Yeah. I I am still on the fence about those. The links. If you handed me those links today, I'd tell you they're not Rolex. You might be right, Rob. Like that little plastic piece that yeah, I Rolex feel like that's a little red. plastic in the construction of their watches. The one and only exception to that, and it's not plastic. It, it's a it's a proprietary uh, polymer that they call xylene, and it's the and it's actually a gasket between the crystal and the bezel on top of the watch. And the crystal being the little glass that you see through. Gosh. Well, yeah, that's um. I have I have you questions see how the, on that. The link itself, the the profile of it is kind of banana shaped. Uh huh. Residential links are not banana shaped. Well, this is a different one now. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you this see is that a... black core with the hole in it on the smaller of the links? That wouldn't be Rolex either. Okay. Yeah, these are all terrible pictures. Yeah, yeah I, I have I have questions. When it comes on... to watches and jewelry, a terrible picture is a huge red flag. Mm-hmm. What's a good um red flag? You know, like uh that's my listing. That's <laughs> what's a good red flag when you when you see a Rolex. Um, okay, over the window, there's a little window, a little magnifying glass over the date. That's fine. What what's a good watch that we can pull up? Rolex date just. Okay. Date just is all one word. How many uh, millimeters we're looking at here? Doesn't Forty one and thirty six. Okay. Okay, pull up any one of those pictures. All right. Let's that blue look at dial the, would be a good one. That's not a bad price, thirty nine hundred dollars. What that, do you think? Is that fair? Pocket that change. That's a fair price on that watch. Now, yeah. do you see the magnifying lens directly over the top of the date? Yep. Okay. A lot of the fakes. That magnifying glass is supposed to magnify that number three and a half times, which at that small of a focal distance is huge. So if you're holding one of these watches in your hand at a garage sale and you roll it back and forth to see the difference in size between magnified and not magnified, and there's not that much of a difference, that's a red flag. Uh, okay. Some of the other red flags will be anything that is yellow in color, like the crown, which is the winding knob, the bezel, which is the decorative fluted piece around the crystal. The uh -huh. center links can sometimes be yellow. We call that a stealing gold or a two-tone. If any okay. of that gold colored stuff if, if it's got wear on it and it's a different color in the worn areas, like it's worn through the plating, Rolex does not plate. It's solid or nothing, period. So if you see uh, worn through plating, that, that's a bad sign. Sharp edges among the bottom edges, the sharp corners, 
Rolex doesn't do sharp corners. Their sharp corners are eased so that the, 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 it may be a perfect 90 degrees, but that sharp corner has been eased. It's been ever so slightly burnished or polished off so it doesn't dig or cut or become uncomfortable. Okay. And that's Man. actually, when you're talking thousands of man hours a month working on these watches, if you don't do that, you save all those thousands of man hours that you're not having to pay somebody to do some minor little detail like that. If you're creating a fake watch, you're not going to pay somebody to ease the edges. Yeah, that's it's, true. That's good. That's one good thing information. You do, if you're going to look for quality high-end watches, go to a quality high-end authorized dealer of high-end watches, handle some of these watches, handle them, pick them up, try them on, feel them. They're, I'd be afraid to try them on. Nah. These watches are built to be worn. You can't mm, hurt one great by point. handling it. That's if a great you point. Could, it wouldn't be, they wouldn't be selling them. But yeah, go in and you need to know the difference between the feel, the heft, and the look of quality. It, it doesn't take long to, to acquire that, that knowledge of what quality looks and feels like. You see these Rolexes with the diamond bezels? All the Yeah, that's bezels. a little too flashy for me. Yeah, and most of those, those bezels and dials are aftermarket fakes. Really? Yeah. I don't see Rolex doing that in their watches. No, Rolex does do that. You can get a completely really? blinged out. This is again is a that's a lady's watch. It's got oh. the presidential bracelet, but it's a date just. Uh, I watch. can see that a lady. But men's watches, ladies' watches, you can get them blinged out. But Rolex only uses colorless, internally flawless, perfect diamonds, and they have their own style of setting. They never bezel or channel set diamonds. And their diamonds will be perfectly matched, perfectly set, perfectly centered. If you're looking at it and the stones look all wonky and crazy, it's not Rolex. So what's uh, let's say Dustin, you know, runs up on some cash uh -huh. and he wants to get a Rolex. What's mm -hmm. a good starting Rolex for Dustin to buy? Air King. Air King. All stainless steel Air King Rolex. It is the Why most is that? simple because it has all the same quality of all the other lines that they make. Has the exact same movement, just not as many complications. With minimal care, getting it serviced every five to six years, that watch will last three generations easily. And it so something like this older. right here. That's an that's a bit older one. Okay. But it, you know, it's simple. There's no date on it there's nothing fancy or flashy about it it's got all the quality none of the flash oh this is a uh, air king this one's expensive 80 eighty three hundred dollars yeah well it's new in box with papers probably so what is that papers model. i uh, keep hearing that term well the papers will be the warranty card and the owner's manual and all of that stuff will have the same serial number as the watch itself it all okay. comes together in one set Okay. Now, do you own a Rolex, uh, Rob? Uh, at the moment, not more than I'm about sure you have. Seven. You know, I, your... I have several in various states of uh, being refurbished. Most of them, though, I use as um, donor for donor parts. If I get somebody who has a Rolex and they're going out of town next week, God, how many times I've heard that. Oh, and I right. need a part to fix their watch. I'll rob it out of one of mine, order the part. I'm going to charge them for the part. And when the part comes out, I'm going to put it in my watch. There you go. Man, this is a nice blue. I like this blue one. Yeah. You can get beautiful Air King Rolex. It's all stainless steel. So you're forgoing the expense of the gold. The stainless steel is tougher, more resilient than the gold. And these days, nobody wears gold. Everybody wants stainless steel. I like. I wear gold. I like a gold. Look, I still like gold. But for a daily wear watch, stainless steel is where it's at. Gold watch is a dress watch. The two tones are supposed to be the best of both worlds. Not really. The gold is not going to withstand the treatment of a work watch. 
this watch dresses up, dresses down, no bells, no whistles. All it's got is all the quality and the look. Hmm. 45. Is that a fair price? $4,500? That might be a little much for that one. That's probably more like a $3,500 watch. Okay. Okay. It's been Doesn't... repolished. It's not a horrible price for that watch, but I think you can get the same watch if you're willing to wait a little while. You can get the same watch a little cheaper. Signature confirmation. I, I would hope so, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> these days when you sell a Rolex on eBay, you have no choice but to send it to their authenticity. Yeah, center that's what this is, right? They not only authenticate that the watch is real, but they will balance that watch <laughs> against your listing to make sure that you uh, described and pictured the watch correctly. Then they send it to the customer. And once upon a time, Rolexes were the most scammed item sold on eBay. You would sell somebody a Rolex, they'd say they didn't get it, or they'd say the watch it was INAD, and then they would send it back, and it would be a rock in a box. Mm. Well, these days, in order for anybody who buys a Rolex on eBay to return it, they have to return it to eBay first. So okay. they, they knock the scammers completely off the board. It is impossible to be scammed on a Rolex anymore. So if they return that, it, they amazing. send it back to the authenticators. The authenticators open the watch up, look at the watch, and they make sure that nothing has been cha changed out. And it is the same watch that Rolex that, or that eBay sent to them 30 days or less before. Okay, hmm. nice. Now, Rob, question for you. You know, we're talking about watches. So for for a guy that works on these watches for you for 30, 30 something years, uh -huh. what's the benefits of having a luxury watch and and these, what's the benefits of having a, lu a luxury watch instead of well, having like an, I, of a Timex. like an eye watch or, you know, like an Apple watch or something like that okay. or Samsung watch or whatever like that. Brand new Rolex costs fifteen twenty thousand dollars how much does a brand new i i watch apple watch cost i don't know let's say 500, 500 bucks 500 yeah. bucks okay for the same money that you can pay for that rolex you can buy a dozen of those apple watches uh huh when the last one of those apple watches is completely unusable for whatever reason that rolex will still be here with minimal care a rolex should last 3 to 5 generations so your great, great, great grandchildren could possibly wear your watch. And not just Rolex. Omega makes a, a top end watch. Okay. There are a lot of, you know, uh, I say Patek Philippe, uh, Vacheron Constantine. There's a, there's a lot of very upper end, high quality watches. The key What's your favorite? Watch, my favorite. Oh, man. My favorite is the old American-made Elgin pocket watch. Elgin. Okay. How do you spell Elgin? E-L-G-I-N. E-L-G-I-N. -E that would be watch. Elgin, Illinois, which was where the, ah. the, it was originally the national watch company in Elgin, Illinois. But everybody just called them Elgin, so they eventually changed their name to straight Elgin. Remember the story yeah, of my great grandfather's nice. pocket watch that I had? This was it. This was it. It was, in fact, I have it close by. Hang on, let me see if I can lay my hands on it real fast. Okay. All right. All right. This has been incredibly informative, Dustin. So, do you have an itch to buy a Rolex? Yeah, let me just take that alone. I think, dude, you can buy. If I, I think if we. I think we can flip to buy a Rolex. That might be a great video. Let me make you big here, uh, Rob. All right. I'm going to sacrifice. <laughs> Let's see that watch. All right. This is my great-grandfather's upside-down pocket watch that I just dropped on my table. <laughs> the thing I know how to work on. Oh, they... All right. Let's see. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Well, as nice as that looks, let me show you what captures and creates watch collectors and watchmakers. Look at this. 
Oh, that's amazing. That's Check sweet. that out. I'm... This watch was made in 1906. Gosh. And for the people listening to at home on the podcast, come over to YouTube and you have to check out this amazing looking watch. <laughs> uh, you work on that. That's just mind boggling to me. This is the great grandfather's pocket watch that I never could find anybody to work on. In fact, even after I'd been working on watches for 10 years, I still didn't work on it. After doing a five year apprenticeship under a master Rolex watchmaker, I went to his house one day after I was no longer his apprentice and he finally told me and it shocked me that he told me because he had never complimented me before. He told me I was probably one of the best he had ever seen. Wow. High praise. That day I went home. I broke out my great grandfather's pocket watch and I refurbished it. Wow. So it took me roughly 15 years to get my great grandfather's pocket watch fixed. I spent 15 years learning my trade specifically to be able to work on my great grandfather's pocket watch. That's amazing. That is amazing. Well, Rob, this has all been great information and guys, I'm sure Rob will give you more great information each and every Wednesday night when he goes live on YouTube and make sure to follow him on, um, Instagram. His YouTube is linked down in the description below. So we got one last question, Rob, for you before we get out of here. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everybody here in the chat that's joining us on your Sunday evening. Uh, so I know we have a little, a little. You talked a little bit about what you're doing here in the near future, but what are some goals that Rob has here soon? What are you shooting for, Rob? Get more listings done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are we all? <laughs> right yeah aren't we all for sure so there you go what what um what do you like to sell rob besides watches man anything that'll fit in a 10 by 8 by 6 or smaller box and has a and i can make five times my money on and i mean anything yeah i comp out everything if i'm in the store and i can't find my run-of-the-mill ebay reseller fodder I start picking up weird things and comping them out. That's it's, good. It's That's amazing. good advice for anybody. Weird $100 items I've found. There you go. Rachel saying junk monkey is great and everyone should sub. So I agree a hundred percent. So guys, thank you so much for joining us for another fantastic episode of this week in reselling podcasts. I'm your host, Ray. And, um, yeah, this concludes anything else for the people, Dustin. I got nothing. Everyone have a great week. Get your listings done and get some sales. There you go. Rob, anything else for the people? Don't buy vintage ladies' watches. Buy everything else. And get okay. it, it won't sell if you don't list it. There you go. Fun facts. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ray. My name is Dustin. I'm, I'm the junk the guys. There you go. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. See you all and God bless. Peace. Peace.